and welcome once again to Health and Family. This program is designed to highlight, at times, medical conditions that can affect everyday Bermudians. That is the case with today's program. How many of you have heard of the disorder lymphedema? I would guess it would not be a very high number. So let's see what we can learn about it. Joining us today is Dr. Eugenia robinson Laban, a colleague I've known for many years, too many to mention. But first joining us will be a Bermudian physiotherapist, Dr. Tanea Birch, and she's from the In Touch Therapy Group to discuss lymphedema. Dr. Birch, thank you for joining us today. So we wanted us to start off with, as we always do, define lymphedema for us. And, and the reason why I'm practicing saying it is because I really thought it was just one word, but it's, it's many uh, words that can describe a disorder. So talk to us about lymphedema, which I understand is the umbrella, correct? Yes. All right, so talk to us about that. So lymphedema being my absolute passion. Okay. Um, it's one of those things that, you, like you said, you haven't heard a lot of, but is very prevalent on our island. Okay. So lymphedema is a special type of swelling. Um, it's actually not just water fluid, but actually a high concentration of protein fluid that can develop in your arms, your legs. Um, that's where it's most commonly known mm -hmm. to develop, but it also can develop in the trunk, in the breast, in the head and neck, um, and even into the genitals. Wow. Um, so it's something that can affect people's mobility, um, their independence. Um, you can get lots of infections and stuff from it. So it's one of those uh, diseases that you really want to um, get a handle on early um, when, it's, when it starts to develop. Okay, so um, I, uh, were you gonna, you, you treated our guest, uh, guest later on, uh, Eugenia, yes. and so I was thinking it was like just maybe a amplified version of cellulite. Mm, yes, no. Not necessarily, and not truly in uh, Eugenia's case. Okay. Um, so when you're talking about lymphedema, you've got that high concentration of proteins that are in the in the fluid. Your lymphatic system covers you from head to toe. Right. It's like a plexus. Um, it's very superficial. We can get into the stages of lymphedema, but most people think of lymphedema when they see stage four. That's your elephantitis. Like people's legs are huge and they just don't look proportioned to their body. Right. Um, so when you have that type of swelling, you can definitely have um, your mobility is affected, um, the clothes you wear, um, it, you're at risk for infections and that type of thing. When we're talking about Eugenia's case, she actually has a lipolymphedema, mm -hmm. which is a combination of lipedema, which is a fatty deposit abnormality, right. um, and then lymphedema being the swelling on top of it. So there is a combination with her. Uh, we can actually treat the swelling part, which will actually help to reduce the size of the limb that we're actually treating. Okay, um, and, and just a little interesting sidebar. Uh, as I said, Eugenia and I actually worked together, and we were talking. It was one day we were doing um, the the duties <laughs> at lunchtime duty, and I said, "Listen, you need to come on the program because I don't think a lot of people know about this." And I don't know how receptive she was in the beginning because she did give me a while to come back with an answer, and then uh, she said, "Great, she would do it." So I'm really, really happy that she's agreeing to do this. So you did mention that Eugenia has a specific type of lymphedema. How many types are there? So lymphedema um, having being the main umbrella of the of the disease um, has different stages let's mm -hmm. say that. So you have a latency stage where your body is able to maintain that balance and so if I can step back lymphedema only occurs when the balance in your body is off. So we all produce a lymphatic fluid. Okay. It's part of your immune system. We need it, it's present, and we all have it. Okay. Now, when there is a disruption to that transport system um, that's moving the fluid in our body, that's when we're gonna start to see and develop lymphedema. So your body produces this fluid. Right. Say you have what we call secondary lymphedema. There's a known insult to your lymphatic system. You've had some type of surgery. You've had some type of injury. Most commonly, people think of uh, breast cancer, and they've had lymph nodes actually right. removed. Right. Now, your lymph nodes are part of your lymphatic system. They are your filters. They are 
clusters of lymph nodes that affect an extremity. So say your lymph nodes in your right axillary or your armpit right. mainly do that right arm. Okay. So when you have a diagnosis of breast cancer and then follow up with treatment, sometimes those lymph nodes are removed depending on the spread of the cancer. As you remove those filters, which are your lymph nodes, the transport system has now slowed down. If your body is able to maintain that balance, the same amount of fluids being produced, always. Brain doesn't get the message that says, hey, something's happened, mm -hmm. let's slow down on the production of fluid. Doesn't happen. Always producing the same amount of fluid. Now your body has slowed down. It's like a train. Mm -hmm. It's got this load on it, but it's moving very sluggishly and very slowly, but the load's still coming. That's when you're gonna um, notice that accumulation of fluid in whatever part of the body is most effective. Okay. Now, can this be prevented? Um, and that's the key. The best thing to do for lymphedema is to prevent it. Okay. There is no cure, yes. unfortunately. Okay. There is a maintenance program right. that we do, um, but there are things that you can do to kind of decrease your risk of developing this lymphedema. Um, and like I say, there's, there's no major, uh, what do you call it, like a factor that's going to say this person's going to get it oh, versus this ask, person's right. not going right. to get it. It really is that person's ability to maintain that balance. Some people develop it right after they've had their surgery or an insult to the lymphatic system. And some people, 15 years later, where they're not even associating that injury or that issue with the lymphedema that they're now developing, but that's when their body you know, lost that balance, mm -hmm. and that's when they'll see it. Oh, wow. So, um, so you said so this can last for a long time in somebody's life, so it, it can just come like on at one time, and this just be with you for the rest of your life, yep. or? There is no cure, and so when we say there's, there's two types of lymphedema, primary lymphedema, where there's no known cause. I think that's kind of the hardest one to kind of yeah, deal with. Yeah. It's, um, there's, there's no reason why all of a sudden my arm is swelling or my legs are swelling, and primary lymphedema is usually in the legs. Okay. Um, some people are born with a lymphatic system that just doesn't have as many vessels. Okay. Um, you can, there, there are babies that are born with congenital primary lymphedema where they literally are born and you can notice it right away. Um, and then there's secondary, of course, where you know that there's been some type of injury, lymph nodes removed, secondary to cancer. Um, but also I've had patients come and develop secondary lymphedema because of multiple ankle sprains. Mm. Like I said, the lymph lymphatic system is so superficial, it's so mm. delicate that even just a recurrent injury can cause you to have this breakdown in the system. All right, so we don't have much time. We're, you're only gonna be with us for the first half, but talk to us about treatment, um, and, and maybe we can kind of touch on what Eugenia is dealing with, if yes. that's okay with you. Yep. All right, cool. So the umbrella treatment um, is called complete decongestive therapy, mm. and that consists of four major components. There's the manual lymphatic drainage, which is a special type of massage, for lack of a better word. I hate to say massage mm -hmm. because it's not using any oils and all of that type of thing. We're literally using the skin stretch mm -hmm. and recoil okay. to help move and uh, stimulate the lymphatic system. Um, we can get it to reroute um, around areas that are, have been affected that we don't want to pass fluid to anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's very relaxing. It's, you know, people come, they go to sleep with me all the time. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's, we, can, we can use that lymphatic system or that type of uh, treatment massage um, to reroute the fluid. Okay. Then there's compression, um, which is a major part of it. Okay. That's what keeps it flowing. Um, now, in, compression meaning you're putting something on it to yes. push it down? Yes. Okay. So most people know about the sleeves that they see women after they've had breast cancer and they've got this swelling in their arm and they see them wearing the sleeves or their stockings right. um, for people who have it in the legs. Right. Um, when you're talking about treatment-wise, if you are in the intensive phase, we can actually use bandages. There's a five-layer bandage system that can go on that simulates what a compression uh, stocking or sleeve would do, which is graded. It's it's more pressure at the distal end and then comes less as it comes towards your trunk because we're always wanting to push and move that fluid up and out of the extremity. Okay. So if we need to do bandages, we'll do them first. Um, and that those people are coming every day 
for four to six weeks if it's in the leg, three to five weeks if it's in the arm, um, but that compression is a major com component. Okay. So you manual lymphatic drainage, you've got your compression now in some form, bandages or stocking or sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, skin care is very important. Um, what tends to happen is the skin gets dry. Um, it's got this layer of fluid that's very superficial. Mm -hmm. The blood vessels and everything that give the nutrients to your skin have to go through this layer of fluid that is usually not there. So it's, it's can't get to it as readily. So your dryness is a, is a big thing. So keeping it moisturized so that it doesn't get any cracks or anything is, is a big part. And then of course, decongestive exercises. Okay. These are very simple. You just get in the muscle to pump as, as best you can. Um, simple things like flexing and extending your wrist or your ankles, bending the knee. That milking um, effect is what's gonna help move the lymphatic system. You've got the compression from the outside and then you've got your muscle pumping from the inside and that's helping to milk and move and stimulate this lymphatic system. Okay, so you're a physiotherapist and you actually have a, a business, yes. the In Touch Therapy, and so if people wanna consult you and, and talk to you about, it may not necessarily be lymphedema or lipolymphedema as our guest has, what should they do? What, how can they, um, you're going to consult with them, I would think, yeah? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, we come in and they have an evaluation done. Um, I'm located at In Touch Therapy mm -hmm. on 45 King Street. Um, but they can call, they can go to our website, um, and they have a contact page that they can tell me what's going on. I can give them a call. We can do a phone consultation first. But definitely when you're coming in, we're wanting to assess what's going on, see how much swelling you have. We take uh, circumferential measurements so mm. that we have a baseline from where we're starting to where we're going to go. Um, that can get me on a whole nother soapbox. Okay. As in yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. we only have two I minutes. Know. So do me a favor. So I want you to kind of um, tune in on on what Eugenia has, because she, she's the one we're going to be talking yes. about. Um, how are you handling, how are you, di you've diagnosed her, obviously, yes. but how are you treating her? Yes, yeah, so, so the lipolymphedema, like I said before, has that fatty uh, deposit. Now that can affect the lymphatic system just by the extra pressure from those uh, fatty deposits. Mm -hmm. And then she can get the lymphedema on top of it. So technically what we are actually treating is the lymphedema, mm -hmm. but we're dealing with it because she has this lipo part to it. Um, so the treatment is the same. There's the manual lymphatic drainage. There's some form of compression. Um, there is the skin care and the decongestive exercises. So um, she comes in and she has all of this done and then she can use a compression pump um, at home or in the office to kind of continue moving and helping that lymphatic fluid to up and out of her legs. Okay. Is this a frequent thing in Bermuda? Because I haven't really heard that much about it. It is. I came back to Bermuda in 2004 and in 2006 I saw this need and I was just like, I need to go and get certified in this and because there are so many people and of course it's not just um, after cancer and that type of thing, it's people post-surgery. Um, your knee replacements, that these people are just, the lymphatic system is just not flowing. Oh, okay. So okay. you can help so, so many people with it. So it's not necessarily that you're born with it, it's just something that can occur, as you said, maybe after surgery. Yep, you can be, you can be born with it, okay. but most, most people have a secondary um, insult to their, to their system that's gonna cause them to have this accumulation of fluid. Are there certain foods that, that one, if one has this, should stay away from? Um, there's no special diet, but of course we know that when we have a, lot, a high concentration of sodium and salt in our diet, that helps you to retain fluid. Mm -hmm. So um, avoiding those or keeping your sodium low. The one thing I do want to say is hydrate. A lot of my patients come in. Because it just seems so contradictory. It because does. <laughs> it seems like, you know, you're looking at, at the lymph lipolymphedema and yes. it's, you know, and so you would think the water would make it mm -hmm. worse, but actually you're saying that that's the best yes. thing. Yes, hydrate. We definitely have patients coming in and they're saying, I'm not drinking any water because I'm swollen. Right. No, keep hydrating. That helps to move the system. All right. Uh, folks, I want you to stay tuned. We're actually going to meet Dr. Eugenia robinson Levant. so uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks for coming on back. Now joining us today on Health and Family is Dr. Robinson Levan. She has been diagnosed with lipolipidemia. Eugenie, we want to welcome you to the program and thanks for sharing your story. Thank you for and having me. I can actually visualize both of us doing duty on a Monday as we always do. And I was like, 
She would be an interesting topic to, to talk about mm -hmm. on, on, our, on our program, mostly because you've had such a, a, a variety of things going on in your life. You were Miss Big and Beautiful, if I, if I remember. Oh, contestant. And Miss contestant, Big. but mm -hmm. you came like third or something. No, I didn't place, but I did won a couple of prizes. Okay. I won about three prizes. Yeah, you yes. did really well. Yeah. You are Thank a you. math teacher. Yes. You are a pastor. Mm -hmm. Minister. A minister. Yes. Um, you recently uh, received your doctorate. Yes. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. So you've done quite a lot yes. with your life, so good for you. Um, and you also do vision boards, yes. which I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. And um, that may actually be another topic we'll, we'll talk about because I find them so so inspiring yes. to do it. It kind of guides you. Mm -hmm. But we want to talk about your, your disorder, which is entitled lipolymphedema. Yes. Talk to us about when you were first diagnosed with this. Well, believe it or not, I was self-diagnosed. Okay. And um, it all came about where I was experiencing certain, uh, I noticed that limitations of movement couldn't stand long, long periods of time. Mm -hmm. I was, I volunteered for a woman's program, a woman's program at Southampton Princess, okay. and I was given the task of being the head usher. Okay. And I was like, I know, I cannot walk up and down those steps oh, wow. in the big ballroom, yes, sitting yes. people. And so I was tasked to get in a team of people together, and I did. And while I was there, I was really concerned about the fact that I could not move efficiently mm -hmm. to fulfill, you know, the role that I had. Thank God that there were people that said, I'm got this, and they just ran. So people How, just told you, you, you have this lipo No, I'm, oh, gonna, no, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. No, um, let's see. Let me backtrack a bit. Individuals assisted me with the head ushering. Okay. And they said, I've got this for you. Don't worry about it. You just do your role from okay. her. Okay. Okay. So that's support. And that evening, I remember feeling so disappointed mm. in myself. Mm. I literally cried. Mm. And I said, I don't know what's wrong with me, but my body hurts. And so I just started typing in, searching. I started typing in my symptoms, you know. Uh, thick legs uh, and where my pain was. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, stuff was literally coming up. There was some uh, tax coming up. Then I said, let me hit the pictures. I hit the pictures and I saw somebody that looked just like me. Your, your disorder. The, the, yeah, the, the disorder, like yeah. especially where one of my legs are larger than the other. Oh, wow. And um, the shape of her leg, the bulk of the, um, I guess, what we would call fatty deposit. Right. Um, where it is like closer to my hips, right. you know, individuals saying, oh, you got a small top and B kids. I just that. <laughs> wow. Top, Hello. But, yeah. That's what it's from. That's really what it's from. Okay. From this um, disorder. And so you, and were, you were an adult when this was diagnosed too. So, so yes, said, this yeah. actually was in 2009. Oh, wow. And um, as I was searching online, I received a phone call and it was my friend, Reverend Dr. Emily Gale Deal. Oh, yeah. And, and she said, you know what? And she's like, what you doing? I told her what I was doing. And she said, you know what? The guest speaker at that time was um, attorney Patricia Russell McLeod. Okay. She said, oh, that's not normal. That is not normal. Whatever is on her, you know, whatever she is dealing with right. is not normal. And um, so that was like a confirmation for me at that time, mm -hmm. that very time when I was online looking, explaining to her what I was looking for right. and what was coming up. I was telling her I was crying and she had mentioned that, you know, somebody had noticed and said that's not normal. Now this is post me getting uh, uh, a diagnosis. Not, not even, so after, the, after that, mm -hmm. I spoke to my aunt who okay. was in the health profession and okay. she mentioned Oh, I've seen that word. I think I've seen that word. The lipo li li um, lymphedema clinic. Okay. She said, I've seen that word. And she came back to me. She said, I've seen that up in the floor of the, um, in the hospital, in the old wing. That's when I called them. And that's when I was told, and that's when I first met um, our guest, um, uh, Dr. Tanea, okay. in conversation, had that consultation. I went to my doctor, did everything that they told me to do. And I asked my doctor, so is... Do I have lymphedema? <laughs> he said, maybe. Oh, just like that, maybe. <laughs> I was so he angry. wasn't sure. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I quit all that right, doctor. We're not going to mention that yeah. doctor's name. Okay. No, we won't do that all at right, all. No, no. But, you know, that's something I had to deal with. Right. You know, and um, being real, knowing that. that 
this was part of the reason that um, my weight was always off. Right. You and know, so were you trying to lose weight and like you couldn't lose course, weight? Of course. I was trying yeah. to get surgeries and everything. Oh, wow. You know, I've been away and to um, to see if I can even have a... Uh, the gast, das, you know, the gastric, um, something, thank you, yeah. bypass. Mm -hmm. And they told me no. They said because we can't find anything wrong with you. No diabetes, no high blood pressure, no other chronic disorder that will warrant me to have this um, this operation. Wow. And so, and now knowing that what I have is lymphedema, if I would have had it, that operation, it probably would have been worse because I would have caused injury to you know that really? system as you've heard dr tanea constantly refer to that secondary and how it can happen oh, wow. so um yeah so in 2009 is when i was diagnosed okay. and then i proceeded to go ahead and have my six weeks of treatment and so what does that consist of six weeks of treatment treatment is as she explained the um the massaging, oh, massaging right the compressions so i used to have both my Okay, so I have both my legs wrapped. When I mean wrapped, they wrap wrapped them. Gauze or? The gauze, it's gauze, it's foam, mm -hmm. and it's special bandages, mm -hmm. which I understand, if I'm correct, they lose their elect, um, they have to be renewed like every six, three months or something like that. They have like, you know, they run out of their strength, the right? And so, and I was wrapped from my toes, both legs from my toes right up to as far as they can get it on my hips. So this is like a treatment when you go to this see Dr. Part of the yes. Okay. Yes, that's so part of the initial treatment, mm -hmm. these six weeks. And then they get you fitted for the um, compression stockings. Okay. Well, my compression stockings, I, those things were so tough. It was hilarious. It I'm was not laughing, I'm laughing at the way you're saying it. It's it was just, it was hilarious. Okay. I mean, it was a family thing. So, you know, because I'm thinking of like when, when I had surgery a few years ago and I had you have to wear stockings, am I correct? When you're about to have surgery to yeah, keep it circulating. Type of black stockings. Oh, no. okay. And mine had to be custom made. Okay. So I had one leg coming up and it was a big belt to hold it up and oh. then another leg with a smaller belt. Because every time I and this was just um, this is and, and one thing I could say about my initial treatments. It was sort of hilarious um, because um, if I recall, Dr. Tanea had to go on medical leave. And mm -hmm. so I had also with Dr. Jensen Bascom okay. and he had the task of trying to make those things stand, stay up okay. because they had to stay on all day. We have to go back and we take them off at the hospital and we, um, they do what they gotta do and we take our shower at the hospital mm. and then they have to re-bandage bandage us up. We're talking every day, every so this day. This is when you're, you're enduring the treatment process. That's the treatment process, okay. every day. Oh, wow. Every day, so uh, mine used to just drop off my hips. They okay. used to, it was just funny, so. Because, you know, we, we, I was <laughs> saying to you, you're, you're small up top, but mm -hmm. then down the bottom, that's when you see you yeah. see um, the lipo lymphedema yes. in, yeah. in, in So in I had action. to live with that for a while. Um, at that time, um, I forgot where I was working, but, oh, I may have had my homeschool at that time. But then something, I dropped off from the treatment. Oh, I have completed the treatment. Okay. And then I had the... Um, so the treatment was like six weeks? Six or? weeks. Okay. And then I had to use the customized um the compression okay, stocking okay. and continue doing myself on yourself daily um, at yes home. okay so those are some of the things that i'm responsible for um and so what's your diet like well let me let me sh my diet is well, that I right take you off your thing Go okay ahead. i wanted to share this is that i forgot about what I was dealing with, because I used to just go on living. I just went on living. The um, the compressions were so difficult to use. Mm. I still have them, but um, it's like it's getting them up. I really needed help mm. to do that, and I needed to wrap myself at night also. Mm. That was a little challenging. But you and, have children. You have, you have family. Right, I do have children, um, but they were already born then. Okay. Right. So um, as I went along, what actually brought me to it was COVID, actually, because I was involved in going online, going into Instagram, and I saw a little baby. I'm like, I recognize that. And then I started reading her post. I'm like, this little girl was born with lymphedema. And I am complaining 
her hand was puffed up, you know, mm -hmm. she was in legs, um, uh, in wraps and all of that. And it just, I just popped, it re I just, it just came back to my remembrance. Right. And then I reconnected with, in touch, okay. um, with Dr. Dr. Tanea, right, um, to pick up and continue on. So I went saw my physician and, you know, he made the recommendation, recommendation. Um, and of course, uh, just before COVID, I started to go back and um, I forget how many years it was a lapse. And so I do take some responsibility mm -hmm. in forgetting mm -hmm. for and the not too. treatment right. for the non-treatment, non-self-treatment. However, I do remember like with, because it is part it was part of the treatment process. I would rub my legs. I would just sit down and just, rub my yeah. legs. Then I remember that's why I used to do that uh -huh. because of what the phys um, the physiotherapist used to do to me. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, you, you basically lived a very fun. Uh, 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 what, am I, how, what am I trying to say? Your life has been filled. It's, yes. it's not I'm like grateful. it's it, the disorder has kind of affected you that you're not able to to live your life. You work right. with me. You work with yes. me at a high school. Um, you're not exempt from anything because of your disorder, not right. to my knowledge. No. Um, you, do, you do your duty. Yeah, do <laughs> we complain duty. about our duty, but you do do your duty. Yes. Um, and so have there been any hardships, you know, having um, this? I would say one thing that coming through, especially like the last maybe six years, I realized that maybe I have self-afflicted myself. Really? Um, and I would say it like this, where I limited my ability to even take the chance to go back to Cedar Bridge. That building used to scare me, and I know I could not walk from one side to the other within the bow. But you can now. But now I do. You do. I know how to do it. All right. But right? For the, just let me just say, uh, there's, it's, the school is separated into uh, the north block, the central block, and the south, south block. block. And you and I are both located right. in the South, South Block. Block. Mm -hmm. And so it is a ways. It's a good yeah. walk. Yeah. So, yeah. so otherwise than that, you asked about my diet. Right. Um, I tried many diet strategies. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I did find um, that was working for me was uh, some products that I had recognized overseas that are, um, that are available. There are superfruits. Okay. Superfruits and I was introduced to the keto diet, oh. right? And I and noticed that, that I was I noticed that I did drop quite a bit. Okay, I dropped quite a bit of fat. Um, and then again, it's about ma maintenance. So now I am sort of leaning that way. Um, you know, I may have my days where I crave French fries, of course, right, yeah. and so forth. But I do know that my size, and I had to undo everything over my life because remember i believe that i was born with this it became uh, more noticeable i've had a bike accident mm -hmm. and where my right leg was injured and i've had two babies and so dr today did mention right. that sometimes so these things change upon, right? right so it's more amplified now okay. right but as a young child i was always called fat i even had this nickname called six hips when I was in high school. So, you know, yes, I've been affected by the fat, and some people will call this the disease called fat, the fat disease, mm. right? So um, having to switch over my thinking, that's why I will pursue um, the, uh, the beauty competition. Yeah, and, and I have you for that. Yeah, I applaud you for that. Yeah, and um, even now, uh, where most of my ministry is done online, yeah. right? I don't need to stand in front of an audience, but I'm sitting and it's, a, it, it's customized for me. Okay. But there have been challenges with transportation and so forth, right. but I have overcome. Eugenia, I want to thank you for sharing your story big, big time. I really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to going back yes, <laughs> in yes, uh, September. Yeah. All righty, thank you so much for joining us, both of you ladies, uh, Dr. Tanea. Uh, Birch, that is her name, and of course you, Dr. Eugenia Robinson Loban. Thank you so much for sharing your information. For more information on this topic, uh, you can call In Touch Therapy at 238 6824 or email them at office at intouch.bm. On behalf of the health and family team, thank you so much for joining us.